Okay, so what is blood made up of? We talked about it already, and we said that blood was made up of plasma and the formed elements. And so we said plasma was the liquid portion of the blood. So what we're doing here is we're looking at a sample of a blood sample that has been centrifuged. Um, so in a centrifuge blood sample, you take whole blood, right? You take a, a tube of blood from a person, put it in a centrifuge, spin it, right? All the heavy things are going to fall towards the bottom, and the lighter things are going to stay towards the top. So that's what happens when you use a centrifuge. And so what we can see here is the liquid portion of the blood, the plasma, is going to sit up on top. So that's the first portion of our blood, right? The blood plasma. And then we had the formed elements. Well, the formed elements consist in a... Um, spun sample here of what we call the buffy coat, right, which is going to be white blood cells and platelets, right? Heavy cells, but generally a little bit smaller, right? And then red blood cells, right, make up the bulk of our formed elements. The volume of red blood cells that we can see here in the tube, we can also call that the hematocrit. T, come on. The hematocrit. So the hematocrit is the volume of red blood cells uh, within a sample, right, or within your blood. Uh, an average hematocrit, you can see here, uh, if you look at the tube here, it's slightly less than 50% of the volume, the entire volume of the cells. We can say a normal hematocrit is around 45% of the total blood volume. <coughs> So 45% right, is a typical hematocrit volume of the red blood cells within the body. Uh, the other pieces that we can see here we said was the buffy coat, right, which is red blood cells and platelets, generally makes up about 1% or less of the total volume. So 1%. How about less than 1%? All right, 1%. There we go. All right, 1%. We said red blood cells, hematocrit was about 45%. The remaining portion, the plasma, makes up about 50, we'll say 54, 55%. So 40, 54, 55% makes up our, of our plasma, makes up 55% of our blood volume is plasma, the liquid portion of our blood. Uh, the remaining 45, 46% is uh the formed elements. All right? Red blood cells make up the bulk of that, 45%, uh, and white blood cells make up the remainder there. Right? What do we find in our uh, blood plasma? Right? Well, what do we find in our blood plasma? Come back here for a second. Right? We said normally about 45% is our hematocrit. Right? The rest is blood plasma. It contains water, right? mainly water. It's actually going to be about 95% water. But then we find amino acids, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, vitamins, hormones, electrolytes, and wastes. Uh, so we talked about <coughs> transporting vital substances. Right? Most of the vital substances that get transported uh, are dissolved within the blood plasma itself. Okay, so that makes up the characteristics of our blood. All right, so now we've looked at what makes up the blood, right? We talked about blood plasma being about 55% of our blood, uh, and then the formed elements being the remaining 45, right? We know that the bulk of our formed elements are is the hematocrit, right? Our red blood cells. Okay. Another name for red blood cells are called erythrocytes. Okay, erythrocytes is just another name for red blood cells. What do red blood cells look like? Well, they're pretty interesting actually, they're biconcave discs, right? and the reason for that is it increases the amount of surface area. Our red blood cells are what carry the oxygen. Right? If we have greater surface area uh, of our cells, it allows that oxygen to move in and out of the cells much easier. And so what you can see here is they kind of look like a donut. They're thicker around the outside and thinner in the middle, right? You can see a thicker ring around the outside and then a little bit of an indent. So we call them biconcave discs. Right, red blood cells are actually dead cells. They're really just sacs of hemoglobin. Right? Hemoglobin uh, is the molecule that carries oxygen. And so hemoglobin, <coughs> excuse me, uh, hemoglobin is uh, the molecule inside our red blood cells where the oxygen is actually being held onto or transported. So 
Uh, we said there are about big sacs of hemoglobin. Well, about one third of the total volume of those cells is filled with hemoglobin. All right. Hemoglobin can exist in one of two different forms. We have oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin. Right. This is going to be what's responsible for the change in color of the blood. We talked about that with our first slide, uh, the red and blue colors of our blood. Well, oxyhemoglobin is when oxygen is bound. Right? And this one's going to be red. Right? Deoxyhemoglobin right, is when um, Uh, is going to be when oxygen is not bound to the to the hemoglobin cells, and we're going to color that blue. So it's the red blood cells that actually change color, right, due to whether or not the uh, oxygen is present, right, and then that change in color of the red blood cells then affects the color of the blood, which we talked about. Right. The remainder of our uh, red blood cells are filled with water, electrolytes, enzymes. Right. There are some metabolic processes that go on, but uh, there's no uh, nucleus inside the red blood cells, so these are technically dead cells, which is kind of an interesting thing, right? Just big sacks of hemoglobin. What are some of the other characteristics of our red blood cells here, right? Well, because of their shape, they can actually readily squeeze through our capillaries. Uh, one of the interesting things about, um, about our capillaries is that um, they are really only thick enough for one cell at a time to fit through. Right? And these red blood cells, if I draw it kind of like this, right? This is one capillary. Uh, but these red blood cells actually have to fold a little bit. The capillaries are so thin uh, that they actually fold a little bit as they travel through. Right? Part of the reason for their shape is to allow them to bend and fit through these small tubes, through these capillaries. <coughs> so I said they lack nuclei, they actually lack mitochondria as well, so they cannot produce energy through aerobic respiration. Right? The reason for this provides more space for hemoglobin, right? More hemoglobin allows for more carrying of the oxygen, right? More oxygen molecules can fit, right? So these are dead cells. Because they lack the nuclei, they are dead cells. They don't divide. Right? So um, we have to constantly replenish our red blood cells, and we do that through our red blood bone marrow. Right? They do produce some ATP. They do it through glycolysis, so the initial splitting of glucose molecules. Right? So the water and the enzymes within the, uh, uh, within the inside of the red blood cells are going to allow that to happen. Uh, but they don't actually use any of the oxygen that they carry. Right? Because there is no mitochondria, Right? They can't use oxygen for metabolic processes. They don't do aerobic respiration. Right? But because they are dead cells and they don't divide, right, they actually wear out over time. So we're constantly replenishing our red blood cells. Uh, because of that wearing out, they get removed by the liver, they get removed by the spleen. Right? We produce these new red blood cells in our bones in order to replace the ones that have uh, worn out over time. So now we're going to go to another slide. There we go. Just real quick, what is hemoglobin? Right, it's the oxygen-carrying molecule. Right, so we had oxyhemoglobin uh, and deoxyhemoglobin. Right, gives us the color change. Uh, hemoglobin, right, heme, right, requires oxygen. Right? Requires iron. Right, in order for that oxygen to bind. In order to build the heme molecule, right, requires iron. So this is why, because we're constantly replacing our cells, we need a constant source of iron in our diet, is to build the hemoglobin molecules, which then fill our red blood cells. Okay. Oxygen binds directly to the hemoglobin. It does it in sort of a loose factor fashion, but we're not really worried about that. But we know that oxygen binds to the hemoglobin molecules. That's the important piece here. It can carry carbon dioxide, uh, but it carries very little carbon dioxide. What we find is that carbon dioxide is actually dissolved into the blood plasma. In the plasma. So the mechanism for carrying oxygen versus carrying carbon dioxide in the body is going to be a little bit different. Right? The main purpose for our red blood cells and the main purpose for these hemoglobin molecules is to carry the oxygen. Okay? So it's going to end the red blood cells, and then we're going to get into our uh, white blood cells and platelets.